glory, glory. coming out of Genesis chapter 3 and we'll be reading verses 16 through 18. And it reads Unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in the sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and they and thy shall be of thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Over thee. And to Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the fields. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and do it as the holy word. We've read Genesis 3, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. May we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, ruler, creator, judge, and jury, the greatest of great, excellent in all things, my all in all. Father God, Lord, we come to you, Lord, to say thank you. Lord, every prayer should start with a thank you, Father God, for the opportunity and time that you have given us and allowed us to be here today, to give this time to us to pray to you and, and say thank you, Father God, Lord, for all the wonderful things you have done in our lives up to this moment in time. Lord, we ask that you be with us right now, Lord. Let your spirit flow through this service right now, Father God, Lord. As the choir said, Father God, you have been our all in all, Somebody has been crying at night, Father God, Lord. You have been a comforting shoulder. Father God, Lord, somebody didn't have food on their table, Father God, but you provided. Lord, someone was going through the court system, Father God, Lord, and you protected. Lord, you have been all in all to everybody and everything that you that has breath. So, Lord, we say thank you right now, Father God, Lord, for being all those things, Father God. You didn't have to do it, Father God, Lord. For, Lord, we are nothing but dirty rags. And, Lord, we don't deserve it. But, Father God, Lord, you are so good that you gave it to us anyway, Father God, Lord. So for that, Father God, we say thank you. Lord, we have, we're living in the last and evil days, Father God, Lord. We got teachers teaching children to go wayward, Father God, Lord. Meanwhile, there's teachers who are praying with their students and are being fired, Father God, Lord. Lord, we, bless, we thank you for those teachers, Father God, Lord, who stand up. And even in, even, in the, even in the way of maybe losing their jobs, Father God, Lord, they stand in your holy word, Father God, Lord. Help us to be like them, Father God, Lord. Not fearing the consequences, Father God, Lord, but doing what you have commanded us to do, Father God, Lord, which is tell someone about your word. Lord, we give you all praise, honor, and glory, Father God, Lord. Lord, we will not shut up, even in this last and evil day, Father God, Lord, because you have been too good to us, Father God, Lord. Lord, we have, we have testimonies all throughout this church, Father God, Lord, someone who, who was sick and shut in, Father God, Lord, but was able to be here today and worship your holy name, Father God, Lord. Someone who was stuck in the hospital, who the doctors gave up on, Father God, Lord, but you said no. Not now, not right now, not my child. Lord, we have those who are singing the choir right now, Father God, Lord, who didn't know they'll ever sing again, didn't know they'll talk again, Father God, Lord. But Lord, today they sing, Father God, Lord, and that's all because of you. Lord, I don't deserve to be here today, Father God, Lord. I don't get a chance. I don't deserve to sit here and pray to your holy name, Father God, Lord. But Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be here. I thank you for my family. I thank you for the deacons. I thank you for the deaconess, Father God, Lord. I thank you for our pastor, Father God, Lord, who stands on your holy word and is unashamed and will rightly divide your word, Father God, Lord. No matter who says what and who supports, 
Lord, we thank you for him right now, Father God. Lord, Lord, we thank you for his helpmate right now, Father God, Lord, who stands by his side. Lord, we thank you for the reverends right now, Father God, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the musicians. We thank you for Walter, Father God, Lord. I remember when he was on the highways and byways, traveling back and forth on the airplane, Father God, Lord, burying family members left and right. But yet he was still there in the choir, Father God, Lord, ready to sing praises unto your name. Lord, help us to have that type of spirit, Father God. Lord, help me to have that type of spirit, Father God. Lord, to praise your name through anything. To have the faith to know that you will see us through. We know you're a God that doesn't break promises. We know you're a God who cannot lie. So when, I, when you say you will never leave us for, nor forsake us, I know it's the truth. Lord, help us take this service to another level, Father God. Lord, whatever has burdened us this week, Whatever has dragged us down this week, Father God, Lord, release it right now, Father God, Lord. That we may give a un that we may praise your name. Not worried about the person on the right or the left, Father God, Lord, but able to give you praise for what you've done in our lives, Father God, Lord. Not everybody knows what I've gone through. Not everybody knows what they've gone through, Father God, Lord. But Lord, they know that if it wasn't for you, Father God, Lord, they would not be here standing today, Father God, Lord. Lord, bless our pastor right now, Father God, to deliver an, un, the un, an unwavering, unflinching word, Father God, Lord. Have him preaching the man that you would have him to preach, Father God, Lord. Don't have him soften it either, Father God, Lord. If he steps on toes, Father God, Lord, let him step on some toes, Father God. Touch him right now, Father God, Lord. And all these things we ask in your precious son, Jesus, and we pray. Amen. Church, say amen again. Amen. At this time, we give way for our welcome address and our announcements. Good morning, New Hope. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Woo! It's an honor and a privilege for me to be here. Five years ago, on this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of May, I didn't know if I was gonna be here for the fifth Sunday. So I thank the Lord, I praise him for what he's done and what he keeps doing in my life. Woo. In all reverence to God and respect to my pastor, Reverend M.L. Carter, to my pastor's wife, to pulpit ministers, and to each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm honored today to stand here and to welcome each guest, if there are any here today for the first time. We welcome you, and we hope that something is said or done that will compel and convict you to come back, or either just to compel you to want to know more about this man that we serve, because he's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy. So on behalf of our pastor and the New Hope family, if you're looking for a church home, please consider New Hope. And again, you are welcome. Good morning, church. Give an honor to God, um, respect to Pastor Carter and the ministers. Um, I will be doing your announcements this morning. The New Hope Baptist Church Sunday School Department is recruiting for your help for the 2022 Vacation Bible School being held from June 27th through July 1st. Help is needed in all areas, teacher's assistance, teachers, kitchen helpers, registration, games, and activities. For more information, please contact Reverend Boone at 831-394-5118. Romans 12, 13, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Uh, New Hope Baptist Church is sponsoring today a homecoming spaghetti dinner on um, directly after the morning services. This is your private invitation. 
Um, we are asking our New Hope family to bring desserts. If you have any questions, you can contact Sister Joanne White. And I have two more. Senior computer support. To assist our seniors with using and understanding their computers, help has arrived. Sister Denise Maiden and Brother Otha Morgan will be available to work with seniors on the first and fourth Thursdays of the month from 1, 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, we will work with the small, small groups and individuals. If you have a standalone computer or are, are unable to come to the church, you can make an appointment for in-home support. Um, uh, the first senior computer support group will be held on Thursday, May 26th from 1 to 3 in the fellowship hall. And to reserve your spot, you can call Sister Maiden or Brother Otha Morgan. Um, okay, and then graduation invitation. The Sacramento Theological Seminary and Bible College Seaside Campus is having its first graduation ceremony. The New Hope family, um, you are invited to celebrate with us. New Hope graduates are Reverend Jesse Boone, Sandra Boone, Mary Dandridge, Charlene English, and Arcola Morgan. As we receive our bachelor's degree in biblical studies on Saturday, um, May 28th, at 12 noon at Friendship Baptist Church. So come and support our members. These are your announcements. Thank you. Oh, and Sister Winnie has an announcement. Good morning. I'm doing this announcement for our women's chorus president, Renee Delaney who's sitting right there, <laughs> but that's okay. I just want to invite all of the women to our women's chorus rehearsal this Thursday at 5.30. We're hoping that you can come out. The women are just blossoming, and we want all of the women to be a part of it. We don't hold you long, so you can come out and praise and make your joyful noise unto the Lord along with us. So hope to see you on Thursday night, 5.30. Amen. God bless. Wow, oh, you all grown up. Wow. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Amen. Good morning. I'm Good happy morning. and glad and for the be at uh, New Hope. This is not my first time. Every time I come into this area to visit my sister, I'm always welcome at New Hope and some of the faces I always see. My name is Wanda Bell. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm celebrating my sister's 65th birthday. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Trina, and I'm Yolanda's baby sister. And I come to celebrate with her, and God bless all of y'all. Amen. Bless you. Good morning. I'm Dolores. I'm Yolanda's oldest sister. And I've been coming to New Hope for, I guess, about 30 years now. All right. So I'm not a stranger. She turned 65, so we're here from Dallas to help Amen. celebrate. Amen. And praise the Lord with you guys today. Amen. God bless. I don't know what you came to do, church, but I come to praise his holy name because he's worthy. 
He's worthy to be praised because he's been good. He's been good, y'all. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We bless your holy name. Your praise is great. Your name is worthy. worthy. Yes. Worthy. Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Yes, we do. Oh, Lord. We bless your holy name. Come on, church. Your name is great. Your name is great. And worthy. And worthy. Worthy to be praised. Worthy. To be praised. It's worthy. From the rising of the sun to the sailing of the sea. Lord, your holy name blesses me. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh Lord. Oh Lord, we bless your holy name. Your name is great. Your name is great. And great to be a few ways that you can give this morning. Um, <clears throat> NHBC is now accepting online mobile tithes and offering. Um, you can give by giving to nhbc-seaside.com. The other way is by mail, going to P.O. Box 834, Seaside, California, 93955. And then you can also give to Givelify. 
www.givelify.com. And as you already know, you can give here in the sanctuary. Shall we pray? Father God, in Jesus' name, we come to you, your people, Father God, just thankful, Father God, because, Lord, you have given us this opportunity to give in a way, Lord God, that will only bless your kingdom, Father God, your kingdom, Lord God, that needs our help sometimes, Father God. Lord, we just want you to just bless this offering right now, Father God. Bless the givers today, Father God. Bless those that don't have to give, Father God. And Lord, let it uh, do what it's supposed to do, which is build up your kingdom, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You are now in the hands of the ushers. doxology.
Father, we just want to say thank you for all that has been done at this present moment, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, because we know, Lord God, that even though some may not have had some what to give, Lord God, but we thank you, Lord God, anyway, because, Lord God, we know that heart is in the right place, Father God. Bless those who gave, Lord God, and, Lord, we pray that it does what it's supposed to do once again, Lord God, to build up your kingdom, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. today, we're praying for Sister Sherry Smith, who's in ICU. We're praying for Sister Mary Chow, who's in the convalescent home. We're praying for Sister Dee Dee Smith's niece, Sandy, who cares for her auntie here in California and lost her sister. So we're going to pray for her mother, Banks. Praying for Mother Bean. I was looking over there for her. But I know she came to church and I was like, where is she? She's right there. Praying for Mother Bean today. Mother Woodruff. Mother Jacobs. The Jacobs family. Deacon and Deacon S. Robinson family. Sister Winnie and Brother Phil Chambliss family. My Uncle Charles Bernard left home yesterday 10 o'clock we found him this morning thought about it Lord woke us up in our right mind the family's in New York lost loved ones Sister Arcola Morgan is going to have surgery June 1st we're praying for her with her Brother Bill Mitchell, Sister Nisi's husband surgery on June 1st Last but not least, we're praying for Lady Carter. We're praying for you today. And Pastor Carter, that the Lord strengthens you and encourage you. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I stand in need of prayer. The Lord reminded me that not only did I sleep in his presence last night or this morning at 430, but even now, we're in his presence. He reminded me how we are to come to him, even now in your presence, Lord. Before we ask you for anything, we want to recognize your sovereignty. Recognize that you are holy recognize that you are righteous recognize that you are a forgiving God thank you Lord you're a loving God yeah, thank you Lord so father we pause just to say thank you thank you, thank you for your goodness thank you for your mercy thank you for your loving kindness Thank you for keeping in us. Thank you for opening doors when people close doors. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, your word reminds us to praise you with the fruit of our lips. So we thank you. We say hallelujah this morning. We give you glory this morning. Father, we mentioned these names. And there's names that we forgot. But you didn't forget not one. God, we ask you right now to just have your way in the midst of Zion. Lift a hung down head, Father. 
mend the broken heart, Father. We ask you to do it now. Father, that person that came in the door and said, nobody understands, but God, you know. Breathe on us again. Anoint us afresh again. Put running back in our feet. Put clapping back in our hands. Put joy down in the depths of our soul. So, Father, when we come before you, we can lift up our hands and bless your name. So even right now, we clap our hands. There's somebody that don't have hands that wish they could clap their hands. So we clap our hands and give you praise. Oh, Father, look on those rest homes. Look on those on the battlefield, Russia and Ukraine. Look on those in insane asylums, Father. Look on those behind prison walls. Look on those, Father, who are serving in the armed forces. You also told us to pray for those who have rule over us. You told us to pray for the governments. You told us even to pray for the peace in Jerusalem, Father. And so here we are, Father. Not our way, but have your way, Father. And Father, we'll be careful to praise you. We honor you. We reverence you. You said our steps are ordered. So Father, we walk in the steps that you've ordered for us. And with this, Father, we ask that you forgive us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, not taking a bit of your glory, because it all belongs to you. This is our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said amen, amen, amen. amen. amen.
every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to your glory. Come in that name, Father, to say thank you. Thank you for your precious son, Jesus, our Savior, for your Holy Spirit, for your Holy Word. Forgive our sins. Cast them into the sea never to be remembered. Then, O oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Bless these, your people. We pray as your word go forth, if there be any who don't know you, they would come crying, what must I do to be saved? Have your way now. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. From the book of beginnings, uh, the book of Genesis, the third chapter, and the 16th verse, I want to, before I begin reading, I want to thank Carlos Crow. Carlos has been back in the kitchen. She's cooking spaghetti for our, our luncheon uh, after this service. Can we give God a hand of praise or a thank you? <laughs> Carlos has, Carlos has been diagnosed with cancer, and yet she felt compelled as God let her to come and participate in it. So we want to thank God for her. And then I want to, uh, I want to thank God for Ron Johnson um, and for his son. Got news that his son Evan, who is, by the way, on his way to Brigham Young University on a full football scholarship. <laughs> But Evan Johnson is the Central Coast Section 100 and 200 meter champion, so we thank God for that. Evan is on his way to the state track meet. From Genesis chapter 3, the 16th verse, God, speaking to the woman, said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and, she, and he shall rule over you. May the Lord bless his word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our theme for this morning's message is the curse of competition. The curse of competition. I also have a sub theme how to cure the curse. What I'm about to say, a lot of people won't like to hear. I believe there'll be a lot of other women who will get quiet. And a lot of the men will be afraid to say amen. But I will preach the word. The Bible, the Bible, not Carter, but the Bible is crystal clear about the roles of men and women in the context of the congregational church. The Bible is crystal clear about who can serve in the role of bishops, elders, pastors, and preachers in the congregational church. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, and I do not permit or I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. I told you I'm going to get quiet. <laughs> Here, here, 
Paul is clear about the role of authority in the context of church. Paul says women are restricted from having spiritual authority over the men. This is the Bible. This is the inspired word of God. This does not make women less important. Doesn't make women less intelligent. In fact, a whole lot of men know that a whole lot of women are a whole lot smarter than us. Amen. This, this, this has nothing to do with male chauvinism, although we know that that's real. It had nothing to do with the cultural mindset of that day due to the treatment of women. We certainly know that there has been abuse and mistreatment of women throughout the history of mankind, even up to this very day. We see it in the home, we see it in the workplace, we see it in politics, we see it in sports and entertainment, as well as even in our churches. But none of these things change the order of God concerning the role of men and women in the plan of God. This order has nothing to do with culture. It has nothing to do with class. It has nothing to do with chauvinism but everything to do with God's order. And so Paul says in 1 Timothy 2 and 12, and I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to remain silent doesn't mean women don't, don't, can't talk and have to shut up. Right. It simply means to be in order. Right. It means to don't be disorderly. Exactly. It's disorderly for a woman to be in authority over the man in the congregational setting. Right. And, then, and then in verse 13 and 14, Paul says, For Adam was formed first, then Eve. Right. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived uh -huh. fell in transgression. Right. Paul goes all the way back to the beginning of creation yep. before there was culture before there was classism, before there was chauvinism, right. before there was sin. Uh -huh. Paul goes all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve to show us that God had already set things in order. Right. Right. The problem is that many women, women as well as some men, mm -hmm. think that they can change God's order. Right. Right. Many people think their personal experience overrides the word of God and the order of God. Right. Personal experience will excite you. Yeah. Personal experience will make you emotional and heighten your feelings. Right. So much so that people will make decisions based off their heightened emotions and feelings right. that clearly contradict right. the word of God. Right. If you find a bag of money laying in the street, right. say a million dollars, oh, yeah. that million dollars is going to excite you. It will heighten your emotions, and in your feelings, you will want to keep that money. But you know the right thing to do is turn that money in. You are faced with the emotions of your personal experience over you following the standard that has been long established, which is don't take nothing that don't belong to you. Listen. Your personal experience could be a miraculous healing, but that don't change the long-established word of God. It don't change the long-established order of God that goes back to the garden. I know God can do anything he wants, but he won't do anything against his word. In his word, there are no women Bishop, pastors, and preachers anywhere in the Bible. No women in the New Testament church anywhere in the Bible. Stop making stuff up. Why is it that there is such a conflict in our churches regarding this matter when it's crystal clear? You, you, listen, listen. Oh, oh let me move on. Let me move on. Listen. If you want to know where the issue is, we can trace it back to where all the trouble first started, which was in the garden. 
When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the devil tried to seize that opportunity to disrupt the order that God had in place. And because Adam did not stand up in the role he was created and ordained, and because Eve tried to step up into the role she was not ordained, it has been a battle of the sexes from then until now. Since the fall of humanity, the man and woman have been fighting for headship ever since. This is how it all began. After the fall, in Genesis 3.15, God curses the serpent for his role in the fall and promises a savior. In Genesis 3, verse 17, God sentenced Adam for his role in the fall to a life of struggle, hard work, and hardship. Sandwiched between those two sentences is the sentence placed on Eve, the woman. In Genesis 3.16, it says, unto the woman, God says, unto the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow, you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. That's not a good thing. Look here. The Bible says Eve was deceived by the serpent and ate first from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The curse God places on Eve was greatly affected, will greatly affect the life of her immediate family as well as the life of her descendants, which includes us. While Eve would have the blessing of children, she would also suffer severe sorrow and pain through pregnancy and childbirth. You women know what that's talking about. Also, with multiple children, it would bring multiple painful experiences. This was no one-time situation. Every time she went through pregnancy, and every time she gave birth, she would suffer the sorrow and pain of pregnancy and childbirth. It was not uncommon even for pregnancy and childbirth to result in the death of the mother and the child. The other part of the woman's curse would be the battle for headship in the relationship between her and her husband. In Genesis 2, verse 21 and 22, it makes it clear that Adam was created from the dust of the ground, but Eve was made from a rib taken from Adam's side. In the very way they were made, God gave man headship in the order of creation. It has nothing to do with social norms or chauvinism. It has to do with order. God gave man headship in the order of creation. Adam was to be the head, not the boss, but the head. Eve was to be his helper. Even after the fall of man, God never changed the order. But the curse God put on the woman made sure there would always be a battle for control. You're wondering why your spouse is why your spouse keep getting on your last nerve? It's in the text. <laughs> God told Eve, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. The desire that the woman would have for her husband is not talking about, honey, you sure look good. This desire would be to have the man's position. God said to Eve, you will want to control and conquer and be in power over your husband, but he will rule, or in other words, he will dominate you, and he will treat you like an inferior. Understand now that this was not the biblical relationship God intended for the man and the woman. Man was not called to rule or dominate the woman, or to treat her as an inferior. But sin planted the seed of disharmony in the relationship between Adam and Eve. They were cursed with the seed of competition. And in everything, they're competing with one another for headship, 
for who's in control, even in our churches. The only way it could be uprooted is through the promise. The only way it could be uprooted is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus, men and women, should realize that he is the real headship. When you understand who is the real headship, you don't, shouldn't have a problem falling in line and staying in your lane. Amen. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 how to deactivate the curse of competition. Ephesians 5, 23 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Yes, sir. That unto the Lord ought to sure enough say it all. all right. yeah. It goes on to say, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. Yes, sir. And he is the savior of the body. Yeah. Look here. A lot of women, I said this earlier, a lot of men as well, have a problem with the word submission. But we see here that submission was not the curse. Submission is the cue. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. See, someone right now want to boss up right now. I don't care what you say. I ain't submitting to that Negro. I ain't submitting to, no, I don't care what you say. But submission was not the curse. Submission is the cure. Some people think submission was the curse, but God designed submission to be the cure, not the curse. The curse was that the woman would fight for the man's position and the man would dominate the woman. That was the curse, but the submission is the cure. Don't be too proud to submit because we have the perfect example of submission right. in the Bible. Yes, John chapter 6 verse 38 tells us that Jesus submitted to his father. Yeah. Yeah. Says, for I am come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Someone ought to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. Submission is the cure. Yeah. With submission and love, the marriage relationship can be what God intended it to be, both in the home and in the church. If you want to deactivate the curse of competition, submit yourself to the Lord. Submit yourself to Jesus first and foremost. Submit yourself to one another. Why? Submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. That says it all. Verse 25 says, husband, love your wife. As Christ loved the church. Well, how did he love the church? He loved the church so much that he died for the church. He gave his best for the church. And he set things in order. The man is called to be the overseer, not the woman. Not as a tyrant, but according to Acts 20, 28, the overseer is to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Yes, According to Titus 2, uh, 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 verse 3 through 5, the woman is to teach the younger women and children how to live for God. And then everyone is called to be an evangelist. How many know you don't need a license to be an evangelist? All you need to do is believe on Jesus. Tell someone that he came through 40 and two generations, took nails in his hands and nails in his feet, died on the cross, raised from the dead, went to the grave, raised from the dead with all power. That is how, that is how you cure the curse. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know that soon as we leave church today, that folk going to get on their phone. You hear Carter over there? 
Do what you will. I didn't give you my opinion. I gave you the word of God. If you can't handle it, that's between you and God. Stop fighting for the pulpit. There's plenty of work to do. Go look up some women and some children. Get them in church and teach them. Men, get in your place. I said, men, get in your place. Don't be a tyrant, but be a godly man that represents the God of heaven. And be an overseer in your home as well as in the church. Someone ought to say amen. We're all standing. We're going to open the doors to the church. In seminary and Bible co colleges. And this is a good thing. Ladies, get all the biblical information and knowledge you can. But in seminary and Bible college, the percentage of women going to seminary and Bible college is way up, but the percentage of men is going way down. There's nothing wrong with getting you. That's what ought to be happening. Well, with all you're getting, get an understanding. Today there might be someone that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Today is that day and the invitation is extended to you. And it is as simple as the ABCs. We often say it, but it's true. It's not a cliche. A, you have to admit that you are a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the remedy for sin. C, confess him as Lord and Savior. It's all you have to do. And the Bible says you're saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 confirms what I just said. Belief, confession, and you're saved. So we invite you today if you don't know him. And if I didn't know him today, I would want to know him. Someone might say, well, that wasn't the message today. Yes, it was. That was the message today. Because to follow God's order, you have to accept him. You have to admit that I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I, I, I've turned, I, I haven't accepted him personally as my Lord and Savior. Then the Bible says you have to believe it. You're going to admit, you're going to believe that he is the remedy for sin. It was his blood shed for you and me. And then finally, confess him. Confess him. The song says, I believe. You have to tell him, I believe. And you're saved. Would you come today? I believe. Would you come today? We talk about the A, B's, and C's, and Pastor always reminds us too. The D through Z, he'll walk with you every step that you take. If you feel there's a mountain in front of you, he'll walk with you to that mountain. And he's the only one who can say to that mountain, be removed. Someone might have a mountain in their life today. Someone might want to come at this time seeking prayer for themselves, their family, stand in gap for your children. Would you come today, ma'am, sir, young man, young lady, whoever. Maybe you're not in the place you want to be with the Lord. Maybe you want to just renew today. 
Maybe you want to recommit today. You don't have to tell me about it. That's the good thing. You can tell him about it. And guess what? He won't tell a soul. Would you come today? These are coming. There's room up here. The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. I didn't say that. That's in the Bible. Would you come? Then we're reminded by pastor, why put off what you can do today for tomorrow? If you walk out that door and he calls your name after you walk out that door, you can't say to him, I didn't have the opportunity because I present the opportunity to you now. Would you come? He may be seated in his presence. I believe in Father. I receive every single promise. Here I stand. Give God a hand of praise. We have a number that have come standing in the need of prayer. Um, I, I, I don't know what everyone's prayer need. I don't even need to know. I don't have to know, but God knows. Let us bow our heads. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, that great name that is above every name. Amen. We come to say thank you. Amen. Father, you, you brought us here this morning. We know, we think it was the alarm clock that woke us and we got up and dressed ourselves, but Lord, you brought us here. Yeah. We just want to say thank you. You not only brought us here, Father, those who call on your name, you brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And you have given us eternal life. And so we thank you, Father. There are more, all manner of situations standing here right now. Trial and tribulation, circumstances, struggles, heartache and hardship sickness and bereavement someone just feels like they're at the end of their rope father they don't know you got an eternal rope and so father we come praying for those who are here touch father in every situation with the need that they stand in need of give peace to the mind give healing to the body Give strength to the soul. Give comfort to the heart. Remind us, Father, continue to remind us as you declare in your word that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. That we are never alone. And then, Father, we pray if there be any that don't know you in the pardon of their sin, that someone would come crying, what must I do to be saved? We do not have to be weighed down by the curse of competition, but we can have the cure 
of the curse. If we trust in you, have your way, Father. We clap our hands in praise. We thank you in advance. Whatever we're going through, we praise you in advance. For the victory is already won. We may not see it right now, but the victory is already won. And Father, truth be told, you would have me to remind the people that this is a fixed fight. That Father, we're going through the struggle, but you've already given us the victory. And so we thank you. Thank you. Bless your name. Bless your name. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. Let us stand for benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be power, dominion, now and forever. And the church sang. God bless you. God keep you. We look forward. Yes, we look forward to everyone staying and participating in our spaghetti lunch. Uh, let us pray for the food. Father in heaven, we thank you for the things we have heard, the things that you have spoken to our spirit. Uh, Father, we thank you for Jesus. And then, Father, we thank you for the food that we are about to receive, for the hands that prepared it. We thank you, Father, that as we eat this food, that it be to the nourishment of our body, that we might be strengthened to carry on to do all you would have us to do in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. God bless you. Say that again. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, excuse me, one minute. Excuse me.